Okay, so now we are at the point in our ritual series where we have finished writing the ritual, we've checked pretty much all of our work, and now we have to decide when we are going to do our ritual. I left this last purposely because I feel that if you start with this, it skews your entire ritual. You need to start with what you want to do, ideally, and find the time for that. If you are in a hurry, if it's say a healing spell or something that has a time constraint like that, you might do it the other way around, but for dedication and for spells that don't have a time constraint, you should really do it the way I presented it. Because if you start with looking at your astrological correspondences first, you're going to change what you want to do. For example, you might want to banish loneliness from your life, which you would do in a very simplistic form. You would do during a waning moon or at a new moon. But if that's what you wanted to do and you didn't want to wait until it was a waning or a new moon, and it was, say, a waxing or a, new, or a full moon, you might change what you wanted to do to attracting love in your life or something like that. Which, to some people, sounds the same, but it's really not. Banishing loneliness could be solved in several different forms other than attracting love. Although it depends on what kind of love ritual you were doing. If you were doing a friendship ritual, that's one way it could be solved. But banishing loneliness could also be solved by bringing in a significant other, a pet, reunion with a an estranged family member, someone in your family moving to be closer to you, etc. There are different ways that that could be done and you would have more opportunity for them with banishing loneliness as opposed to attracting love. So that's why I like to do it this way because if you look at your astrological correspondences first, your eagerness and whatnot are going to kick in and change what you want to do. So, especially since this is dedication, it's very important that you focus on what you want to do first. For dedication, it could be really done at any uh, moon phase or any time during the year, etc. Usually people will do dedications at full moons or waxing moons, especially for the spell work that we discussed several episodes ago. Um, but it could be done any time, any point during the moon cycle that appeals to you, any point during the year. Especially if that's your favorite moon phase or season or something, because that will speak to you and it's very personal ritual. So you should choose things that speak to you. The other things that you really need to consider besides moon phase, when talking specifically about the moon, are the lunar mansions. So you need to, if you don't know what that is, um, Google it. There are 28 of them. You need to figure out which mansion the moon is in at the time of your ritual and how that is going to affect you. If you do, if you Google it, what the, I think the first site that's going to come up if you search for moon mansions or mansions of the moon is a fairly accurate site. It's like Astrology Weekly or something. I forgot the name of it, to be honest. I'll, I'll, I'll probably look it up and include a link down there. I still haven't come up with a, a name for that area. Some people call it the Chamber of Secrets. The down bar just sounds dumb. So I think I'm going to call it my sacred space. So I'm going to put a link through that to, to that in my sacred space down there. So moon mansions and moon phase. That's about all you need for the moon for your ritual. The other, for the sun you're going to need the time of day and that has astrological correspondences also. My best resource for that and to be honest I don't know how they figure this out so I don't know if it's accurate. But the Complete Idiot's Guide to Wicked Witchcraft has a table with the hours of the day and their astrological correspondences. So that's what I would recommend for that. I haven't been able to find it anywhere else, which makes me question its authenticity. So I use it as a guideline. It's not something I really stick to. You also might consider the time of day as far as the elemental correspondences that are associated with it. Which you can look up in um, several Wicca 101 books. If you have questions about that, feel free to send me a message. You could also do the sun, the but the sun by the time of year. Um, 
and whether it's waxing or waning, etc. That's about it for the sun and moon. The other correspondences you're going to need to look up are any major astrological bodies. The planets, uh, what are they doing, are any of them in retrograde, where are they in relation to the earth, which is usually found easily through Google search or in several uh, magical al almanacs. So that those are good resources too. I don't think the Llewellyn one is very helpful, just FYI, if you're buying it for correspondences like this. It's helpful in other respects sometimes, but it's usually in the stuff they put in it that's not the almanac. So I'm going to do a review of that later, but just keep that in mind that if you're looking for correspondences, don't go buy the Llewellyn uh, which is almanac or whatever it's called, magical almanac, I forgot, they have like 15 of them. So you're going to need the planetary things. If there are any other astrological bodies that are close to Earth at that time, if there are any asteroids or whatever that are passing by very closely, they're going to affect your magical workings. Things like that. Eclipses, good to know, etc. That's the basics of what you're going to need to know. Some people will look up all sorts of correspondences. I feel if they're not that close to Earth, they aren't going to really affect your magical working that much that you really need to look them up. They'll look up like all sorts of asteroids and I'm like, those are really far away. Really? You need to know that? So those are the ones that I look up and uh, the reason I do look them up is because, yes, they will affect your magical working and they'll help you just ha decide what time you want to do your spell or your ritual. They're important to know because they will affect your magic. They could throw it off course, kind of interfere with your results and not give you what you want. They're also part of the process of learning how the universe affects us. So it is good to know and if you really skip this step, it's going to potentially harm your workings and kind of delay your learning in a way because you're not seeing the bigger picture of what you're doing and how you're affecting the universe and how it's affecting you. So I really would emphasize that this step is really important in your magical working. It, it takes a long time to look up all of those correspondences. I'm not saying that it doesn't, but it will have an impact on your ritual. It'll also help you get in that mindset of what you want to do. You have to play with some of them sometimes because some of them won't really correspond with what you want to do, but you can find a way to get around it, so to speak, which takes a bit of creativity and a bit of thinking and analyzing and so on. And again, if anyone has questions on that, send me a message or whatever, post below. And that's really all I'm going to cover in this episode. I was going to go further, but it's getting kind of long. So I'm going to do another episode after this about using those to determine what when you want to do your ritual and using other factors with them to make a de that decision. So I'll see you guys later. Bye.